Welcome to the first episode of Homeschool. Homeschool is a series that I'm starting to help you develop your personal style at home. So each week I'm going to be tackling a different design problem that I've struggled with, my clients have struggled with, everyone seems to be struggling with, and hopefully giving you some quick wins so that you can solve for this problem in your own home. And it's really important to me that this isn't just how to recreate my home or someone else's home on Instagram for yourself. I want it to be adaptable so that you can solve your problems in a way that suits your lifestyle and your personal style. So for today's episode, we're going to be talking about big blank walls and how to fill them. So a big blank wall can usually be found over a sofa, over your bed, over a dining table. And what's really difficult about a big blank wall is that art can be expensive and large art is even more expensive. So it can be very intimidating to commit to a piece especially if you don't know your personal style super well yet. I think it can be really scary to invest in something if you don't know if you're gonna like that color or that artist or the style of that painting within a few years. One route that I see people do quite a lot is to just leave the wall empty. You can have all the furniture and accessories that you need, but if there's nothing on that big blank wall, it can kind of feel like the room is never fully done. That's because your room doesn't have a focal point. The other route that I see that's really common is you do buy a piece of art, but it's say two feet by three feet, which isn't small and it's also not cheap, but you get it home and you hang it up over the sofa and it's too small and the scale is off and it kind of feels awkward. I've done both of these things, so today I'm going to share some ways that I've filled my big blank walls that can be adapted to suit your style. The first quick win that I have for you today is to paint your own art. That's something that I did with this black and white painting that I have over my dining table now, and I have found a spot for that in pretty much every room, every home that I've had because it's just that simple. But if you are into more color, then you can always paint a solid canvas one color, which is what I did here. This painting was a little bit different because I painted over something else that already existed. And that's because I was having a really hard time finding a round canvas. But if you are just looking for a regular shape like a rectangle, there are always large format canvases and prints to be found in thrift stores. And you may not like what's on there, but it doesn't matter. You can just paint over them in one color that suits whatever you have going on in your home. And it really takes no artistic skills. The next idea you can try is picture ledges. I love picture ledges. They are just so easy. It's almost a no-brainer. I've had them in most of my apartments. If you saw my Austin apartment, you would have seen them. And what's really great about picture ledges is that they're really affordable. Mine are from Ikea. And you can change and customize the size and shape based on the wall. So if you have a really long hallway, then you can line up a whole bunch of picture ledges. If you have a really tall space, you can stack three or four high. You can really mix and match to fill whatever blank wall you're dealing with. That's one great thing about them. But you can also customize what you put on the shelves and change it and change it and change it as many times as you like. So if you are someone whose style is constantly changing, this is a really good option for you. You can also display what you already own so you don't need to go out and buy anything new. You just need the picture ledges to give you a new place to display them. Now the last idea I wanna share for today is floor to ceiling shelves. And I think it's important that they're floor to ceiling or at least very tall because I have seen and had a lot of 
regular height bookshelves and they really don't have the same effect. But these shelves that I found are from Ikea. My friend Hannah did this in her apartment and I loved the way that it looks. They're actually shoe shelves. But before I had that, I had a gallery wall. Gallery walls can be tricky. I personally felt like my prints were just kind of floating awkwardly in space, but the size and scale of the Ikea shelves really helped to anchor that room and make it feel more like a dining room, even though it's not a room, it's just one big empty space from here to my kitchen. So if you have an open space in your home as well that has a big blank wall, this might be a good way to kind of demarcate and make it feel more like a room. I'm not against gallery walls. They can be very beautiful, but I think that if you're trying to fill a big blank wall quickly, cheaply, simply, then my favorite route would be to do a grid. You could do a theme, you could do black and white photos, you could, if you love color, you could do all bold graphic prints, but I personally find that this is the simplest, easiest way to make a big impact on a big blank wall. So that's gonna be it for today's episode. I hope that you found at least one of these ideas easy enough to try on your big blank wall. And because this is the first ever episode of homeschool, I wanted to do a giveaway. So if you didn't already know, I offer interior design services and one of my packages is a one hour video consultation. So usually this is a good option for anyone who isn't ready to invest in a full custom design, but you maybe have a specific design problem that you're trying to solve or a room that you're trying to give a refresh. So we just cover as much as we can in one hour and they're also really fun. So all you have to do is share this episode to your stories and add a little note. Let me know what you liked about it and please be sure to tag me. Otherwise I won't be able to see that you entered. I'll see you next week for episode two. Bye.